It's time now for a little latest in local news. In the news, Wayne County Superior Court in session Tuesday morning with the Honorable Judge Anthony Harrison presiding over an immunity hearing for defendant 30-year-old Lannis Paul Brown, who with his Georgia public defender from Atlanta, Arnold Regas, were in court arguing self-defense in the shooting death of Zach Johnson, which occurred back in February of 2023 on Community Circle Road off Ray and in a shed in a backyard. Brown has been charged with malice and felony murder, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime, voluntary manslaughter, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Brown and his attorney were attempting to persuade the judge to throw out the charges, claiming he shot Zach Johnson in self-defense. On that evening, again a year ago, the defendant and Johnson became involved in an altercation that Brown testified to that Johnson started, that Johnson attacked him first, struck him, punching him in the face. Brown said that he shot Johnson because he feared for his life, saying he believed Johnson was going to bodily, do bodily harm to him. Brown knew Johnson. A girl was involved. In fact, Zach Johnson has a child with the girl, Faith Worth, but Brown had feelings for her as well. But Brown testified that he had no issue with Johnson. He testified that he did not, he did not like him, but he simply had no issue with him. On the night in question, it all happened in a little shed. Brown arrived and Johnson arrived about 15 minutes later. Brown testified that Johnson arrived angry at, and was angry at him, came right up to him and hit him in the face, saying that Brown was responsible for doing damage to his vehicle. Brown said he had no knowledge of what Johnson was talking about and tried to leave the shed not once but four times, but Johnson blocked the doorway and would not let him leave, telling him to give Johnson Brown's gun. Brown had a pistol on him, a 380 Ruger. Brown admitted that he had a drug problem at this time, and on this night he had been using meth for three days and had not slept in three days. Brown says Johnson sat down and began taking things out of a book bag, looked up at Brown, and told him that this was his last chance to give him the pistol, and that's when Brown says he shot Johnson. After the shooting, Brown left the shed and was gone for four days before turning himself into police. Under cross-examination, Assistant DA Elizabeth Presley asked Brown about statements that he made after his arrest to both law enforcement and to a female friend. This was a phone call that Brown made from the Pierce County Jail, in which the assistant DA read from the call in which Brown described the night of the shooting, telling the girl on the phone, quote, I was calm, but I really messed this up, end quote. The assistant DA got Brown to admit that he had no idea what Johnson was pulling from that book bag, and Brown admitted that he did not see anything for certain. The assistant DA told Brown while he was on the witness stand, quote, in 20 minutes you smoked meth and killed a man, end quote. Brown answered that he simply defended himself, saying he felt that he was in danger by the way Johnson attacked him, would not let him leave, was demanding he wanted his pistol, and then told him that this was his last chance to give him the pistol. There were several other people in the shed that evening, one a friend of Lannis Brown named Kristen Forchette, but she admitted on the stand that she also had a serious drug problem. In fact, she testified that since this has happened, she's overdosed nine times. But she did testify that it was Zach Johnson who was the aggressor and hit Lannis Brown. Brown testified that he always has his pistol with him and that it was a gift from his mother. He said he was not giving up his pistol to anyone. He testified that he didn't see anyone at the shed coming to his defense, telling Johnson to stop harassing him. So he didn't understand why no one told Johnson to simply stop and let him leave. Brown said he hit him and refused to let him leave, and he tried four times to leave the shed. He said he sits down and starts taking things out of a book bag and looks at Brown and says, this is your last chance to give me your gun, and Brown says he feared for his life, so he shot him in what he described as self-defense. Judge Anthony Harrison listened to all the evidence on Tuesday presented in court, but in the end he denied the motion for immunity from prosecution and says this case will move forward to trial. WFOFM will continue to follow the story as it develops. Brown has been in jail since his arrest last February when he turned himself in to law enforcement authorities. Once again, he's facing charges of malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during commission of a crime, voluntary manslaughter, and possession of a firearm during a crime. Once again, WIFOFM will continue to follow the story as it develops. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor, the Commercial Messages, so please stay tuned. In other news, early voting begins Monday, February 19th, runs up until March the 8th, with the election day Tuesday, March the 12th. Registered voters in Wayne County will be headed to the Cracker Williams Recreation Center of Early Voting on 245 East Bay Street. They'll be voting in the Georgia presidential primary, as well as deciding whether or not to continue the one-cent penny for SPLOS for the county. That's a simple yes or no vote. 
For more information on the SPLOS 5 referendum, simply go to the county's webpage, waynecountygeorgia.us. Early voting Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., two Saturdays of early voting, that time from 9 to 5. Those two Saturday dates are February 24th and March the 2nd. We encourage all registered voters to get out and vote. Once again, it all begins this coming Monday, February 19th. Once again, early voting at the Cracker Rings Rec Center, 245 East Bay Street in Jessup. Tomorrow, the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce hosting their annual State of Education event. Scheduled from 11 to 1 tomorrow at Coastal Pines Technical College. The lunch is involved. On the program will be Wayne County School Superintendent Dr. Sean Kelly, President of Coastal Pines Technical College, Mr. Lonnie Roberts, Sherry Bowen from Wayne Christian Academy, and Elizabeth Williams with Coastal Plains High School. Again, all this taking place tomorrow at Coastal Pines Technical College from 11 to 1. If you need more information, simply contact the Chamber of Commerce today. Their number 912-427-2028. Don't forget the community-wide blood drive set for Monday at Calvary Baptist Church Gymnasium with time from 1 to 6. To schedule an appointment, they can say, go to the redcrossblood.org website, enter Jessup to schedule an appointment. Once again, this is taking place this coming Monday, sponsored by the Jessup Shriners Ladies Auxiliary, location Calvary Baptist Church Gymnasium, 415 East Cherry Street in Jessup. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, the Commercial Messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes in the news, the Wayne County Board of Education met yesterday afternoon. Personnel always part of the agenda. The personnel approved by the Board of Education after the executive session, certified recommendation, Bethany Bayard, Martha Raw Smith Elementary, classified resignations, James Crutchfield, Wayne County High School, Rachel Crutchfield, Jessup Elementary, Lisa Four Central Office retiring, Sarah Gilden, Martha Raw Smith Elementary, Gladwin Harper, Martha Raw Smith Elementary Principal, Melanie Jones, Wayne County High School retiring, Sharon McBee retiring from the Central Office, Elizabeth Mosley, James E. Bacon retirement, Kathy Popple, James E. Bacon retirement, and Maria Wingate, James E. Bacon classified recommendation. And Ashley Williams, James E. Bacon, classified resignation, Shanley Lane, Martha Bucket Middle School, and Tynika Smith, Arthur Williams Middle School, one classified termination, Roland Hopkins, Martha Raw Smith Elementary. Also in Wayne County, it's an election year, and qualifying to run for many offices begins Monday, March the 4th, and runs through that week to March the 8th. On the ballot will be offices of Sheriff, Clerk of Court, Probate Judge, State Court Judge, a couple county commission districts, on the ballot along with two school board positions. Again, the qualifying gets underway March 4th through the 8th. WIFLFM will be following the qualifying period closely. Again, Sheriff Chuck Mosley seeking re-election, but reports are this will be a contested race once again. Once again, qualifying less than 30 days, March 4th through the 8th. Qualifying will begin, and list of candidates will be announced. And again, we'll keep you posted on who all qualifies here on the local news. Finally, don't forget the Hog Jam this weekend, February 16th through the 18th, Wayne County Board of Tourism's annual Hog Jam. Statewide hunt begins this Friday at 2 p.m., ends on Sunday, February 18th at 12 noon. Registration and all the rules are on the Wayne County Board of Tourism's website. And the Wayne County Tourism's Hog Jam set for February 16th through the 18th, headquarters at the J.C. Fair Building. That'll do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, save a great day.